Hello and welcome back to FPV Reviews and this solar plane update. We've been hard at work on Solar Dragon as well as our Maxwell S2 Mini UAV project. The Solar Dragon is a very unique airplane and as such the design decisions have not been easy ones. We may make another video explaining those decisions later on, but for now let's focus on the latest changes and the progress that we've made. When we tried to balance the airplane, we noticed that far too much weight was required to get the CG right, so we extended the nose. We also noticed that, although the shape of the nose looked good in CAD, it looked far too blunt once built, and we couldn't leave it alone, so we decided to remove the upper section and replace it with a new shape and structure. Of course, this new nose would prove to be far harder to fit a battery into. As usual, solving a problem by adding complexity and creating another problem. Fortunately, this was a solvable one and was resolved by creating a unique battery pack and semi-permanently building it into the Dragon's nose. Dragon also needed to have the electronics installed. We were originally going to install a Pix Racer autopilot, but after thinking about the amount of PWM outputs for servos it offered compared to the Cube Black on standard carrier board, the size of the airframe, and the potential scope of the project, we opted for the latter. We also installed a Hollybro 500 milliwatt telemetry module, an I2C digital airspeed sensor, as well as power filtration, double redundant BECs with diodes for separation to power the PIXOC, current sensors, and HERE GPS module by Profi CNC, the same company that makes the cube. We 3D printed our own design for the pedo tube holder after not finding a suitable one on the web. We also had a couple of other unique problems to solve with Solar Dragon, one of which was to install a solar charge remote switch for direct solar charging. The three solar arrays can output about 250 watts max of power. With our 3S battery set up, the amperage is high enough that we had trouble finding a single switch that could do the job and be operated remotely. So we purchased three 30 amp switches, electronic switches, and wired them in parallel, one for each array. We decided to keep it simple for now and just use an RC channel pass through for the control. Problem is, we were using an old Futaba 6EX transmitter with a PPM converter for RC input control to the Pixhawk Cube, and it only had six channels. Four are used for the primary flight controls, aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. Channel five we already used for mode switching. And there was the landing gear. So we decided that there was no reason that the retractable gear couldn't be on the same channel as the solar charging switch. The landing gear was a challenge in and of itself. We didn't really want any landing gear. But with the crucifix tail being vulnerable, and with such a large airplane, we thought it best to use some sort of gear. Without any better idea, and after some thought experiments, we decided to try a single wheel retractable on a full caster. We were counting on gravity to swivel the wheel downwards when it is being retracted to allow the gear to fully retract. It did add about 200 grams to the plane. But it looked cool, and even if it failed, it would provide some point of failure and perhaps absorb energy, saving the airframe from damage of a hard landing. We had some reason to think that such type of gear might be usable, due to its use previously on Solar Impulse 2, from which Dragon had already taken much of its inspiration, and also the success of another large model we had built, which used a single wheel on centerline. Sailplanes of all sizes also commonly use the single wheel configuration with good success. The U-2 and B-52 are also other aircraft which use the inline gear configuration. The B-52 gear being capable of swiveling as well its landing gear to compensate for crosswind conditions. It had also come to our attention that the four racing drone motors with 10 inch props would consume far too much power their KV was very high, and they just were not efficient. In the meantime, looking around the shop, we had a pair of T-Motor 3520-11 400 KV motors 
and some 16 by 10 APC props from another project. And they tested a lot better in terms of grams of static thrust per watt of power use on the thrust test stand. So we decided to use them instead, just as a temporary measure to get the plane in the air and start getting data on the flight characteristics. Feel free to let us know if you have any suggestions as to an ideal propulsion system for Solar Dragon. We installed two of these motors and removed two of the nacelles. We used the same Simon K super cheap ESCs to control them, as they were the only suitable ones that we had for this voltage and amp draw at the time. They are only working at less than 50% of their amp rating, even at full power. We also installed a tail skid and shaped a couple of foam blocks for the wingtips to keep them from scraping on the ground. Before flight, we did some extra research regarding CG location for aircraft with lifting stabilizers and found that the probable CG range was between 50 and 65% of the wing cord from front to back. So we moved the wing forward about 85 millimeters to adjust. We then also had to relocate the GPS receiver module behind the wing. We used our Arduplane setup and tuning guide to configure the Pixhawk Cube flight controller and its accessories. Downloading the latest version of Mission Planner, flashing the latest Arduplane firmware, calibrating the accelerometers, configuring the airspeed sensor, also setting values for airspeed, pitch and bank angles, climb, descent rates, roll rates, auto-tune level, modes, yaw to roll coupling, yaw damping, and many other parameters such as ones having to do with turning performance, power targets, glide tuning, management of kinetic energy, and fly-by-wire characteristics, as well as autonomous behavior and decision logic for failsafe. When the plane loses RC control, telemetry, or runs low or critically low on battery power. We've spent several years now working with these systems, and honestly, they can be very complex. We've compiled our methodology for setting up and tuning new aircraft into a single document, complete with a standard pre-flight checklist rec and recommendations for various types of aircraft and equipment to make it as easy as possible for you to get started with Arduplane for your project. It's a complete step-by-step -step guide which leaves nothing to the imagination and is much more accurate and less confusing than the online documentation on the ardupilot.org website. It focuses on just what is needed, especially for fixed-wing aircraft when setting them up using Arduplane firmware and Pixhawk, as well as other flight controller boards that are natively supported by Arduplane. We're constantly updating the document to make it more streamlined and incorporate the latest applicable features. You can get the latest version of our setup and tuning guide on our website at the link below in the description. So check there for more info, as well as latest info about all of our projects. And check us out on Twitter for day-to-day -day updates. Don't forget to give us a like. If you found this video helpful, subscribe so you don't miss anything in the future. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Stay tuned for the first flight of Solar Dragon coming up very soon.